Hello guys and welcome to a new video and today I have few tips that can improve your reaction in game. After that we'll watch some fast paced Alcatraz gameplay to see me apply those tips in action. Having some crazy reactions against good enemies. This video might be long so I'll leave timestamps in the description so you can skip to the part you want. I hope you guys enjoy and let's get started. As always, I'll start with the most important one, which is getting a good headset. And I'm surprised that many of you guys are not even using a headset. I'm not sure if you realize how much of a disadvantage you're in, but wearing a decent headset gives you many benefits. First of all, it allows you to hear footsteps from far away before it even shows on the indicator. <laughs> Second of all, it allows you to hear the exact direction of the footsteps or the gunshot, so you can rotate instantly and react fast. So the question here is which headset should you buy? Obviously the expensive ones gives you the best quality but not everyone can afford them. But when you buy one make sure it supports surround sound which is the feature that allows you to hear game sounds at 360 like you're actually inside the game. I'm really happy with the one I'm using right now which is the Black Shark V2X from Razer. The sound quality is great, it allows me to hear footsteps from a distance. But the main reason I got this headset is because of the mic. It has one of the best mics you can get for the price range and it's even better than many other more expensive headsets so you can communicate with your friends without blowing up their eardrums because having low quality mics results in a plain engine voice quality which becomes a disadvantage instead of an advantage however the black shark v2x is not perfect as it picks some background noises like cars honking outside my house but overall i'd say it's a great choice for the price especially if you play the game casually for fun and right now it costs around 50 dollars on amazon Another headsets I recommend are the ones from HyperX. They have so many different models and all of them are great. Just pick one depending on your budget. Next tip is related to the settings. First of all, in audio settings, I have my SFX volume at max. This option is responsible for the sounds of the footsteps and the gunshots, which are both extremely important. So you want to have them at 100 to be able to hear enemies coming from far away. In the same section, we have the ambient volume, which is the exact opposite of the SFX. It's basically responsible for the background sounds like the wind or sometimes rattlesnakes on isolated, which can be a bit distracting and I suggest you turn it off. After that, we have another extremely important setting which can be found in the basic settings. Then scroll all the way down to the end. What we're interested in is the sound reminder setting. Because sometimes you get into fights where you hear a lot of gunshots or vehicles driving around or even the sound of your noob random teammates getting knocked and crying to get revived. And as a result, you won't be able to hear footsteps anymore. So that's where this option comes in clutch. It alerts you whenever there are enemies around you without the need to hear them. And we'll see a good example in the gameplay later in this video. Moving on to the next tip that can give you a faster reaction time which is the sprint to fire delay attachments. So when you make a loadout build in the gunsmith, you'll notice that there are some attachments that reduces a sprint to fire delay. So what is sprint to fire delay exactly and why is it useful? Let's say you're sprinting across the map minding your own business. Then all of a sudden you get ambushed by a camper and naturally what you do is press the shooting button to kill him. However, there is a tiny delay between you pressing the shooting button and when the gun actually starts shooting. And basically Basically, that's what the sprint to fire delay is. It's barely noticeable, but it's there. So to reduce that delay, you can use certain attachments like the swift stock for the Mark 10, for example. As a result, your gun will fire almost instantly, giving you a head start over the enemy. And it can be useful for players with high ping, as it can compensate a little bit for the ping difference between you and the enemy. And finally, we have the Trickster class. Other than deploying clones to distract your enemies, the Trickster's passive allows you to hear footsteps louder and from a longer distance. It also counters the Ninja class as it allows you to hear their footsteps loud and clear at all times, even if they have it upgraded. Those were all the tips I can think of and I hope you guys find them useful. Now we'll move on to the gameplay. It was a very aggressive game with some insane reactions. I hope you guys enjoy.
enemies. Even though I was low on health, I managed to outplay this enemy. All thanks to the huge mistake he made when he tried to drop shot me. If you notice right here, he gave me easy three headshots in a row. I really don't think drop shotting is good at close range. Maybe it works against weak enemies, but against a player with good aim, it becomes more of a disadvantage rather than an advantage. Half of the teams are eliminated. Make your team be killed. Down to the last five teams. It was a great example to show the importance of indicators. So I knocked the first enemy, then I switched to the other one, but I cancelled right away because I saw three footsteps on my screen. One for the knocked enemy, the other one for the enemy I was shooting at, and the last one was unknown. I didn't know his exact location, so I retreated a little bit. Took some cover to reload and reset my attack, then I went back and found him right in my face. So if it wasn't for the indicator, I would have overcommitted to the last enemy, which would have left me vulnerable to the last one. Another thing worth mentioning, right here, reviving 
having my teammate was too risky. There was someone near me, plus the revive flight timer just ended, which means the enemies might drop on us at any second. Not only there wasn't enough time to revive him, but I could have died easily in the process. My teammate should have just given up and came back in the revive flight, as he had more chances left. So sometimes you need to make the decision not to revive your teammate. I mean, if your teammate is someone you know and you can count on, then maybe it's worth it. But in my case, I was with random, so it wasn't really worth taking the risk. I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay and found the tips useful. And if you did, then consider leaving a like before you leave. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.